This is part two of my birthday thrifting trip with my daughter. There was a lot of fun vintage stuff out there. I'm Michelle, this is my romantic tangle, and let's go thrifting. I cannot get over how much milk glass I found just in this one afternoon of visiting different thrift shops. It was everywhere, and a lot of it was styles and shapes that I had not seen before, which made it more fun. I not finding pieces I need to bring home, but I still love looking at it. It always reminds me of my grandma. There were a whole bunch of vases because if I'm going to find milk glass, probably 80% of the time, it is going to be a vase. And this sewing machine was the cutest little thing. I've never seen one like it. I am fairly sure that that hole there was the attachment point for a hand crank and that someone at some point in time decided to electrify it. I would love to know the history of this machine. If you know what it is, leave a comment and let me know because like I said, I haven't seen an electric machine like that ever. The legs of this table and chair are the same as the ones we had when I was growing up. Ours was octagonal, I think. The chairs were the same. One of those things that totally leaves your mind until you found it in a thrift store and then it conjures up all kinds of vivid memories. Here's a, now I lay me down to sleep decorative plate and so, so many bells. Makes you wonder if somebody donated their collection or if these all came together from different sources. I love this old car planter. I want an old planter. I haven't found the perfect one yet that I can't resist, but I seem to keep getting closer and narrowing down what I want. And this car definitely was a candidate. And here is a Christmas snow globe that I did not get a good shot of. That was a nativity in there. And I don't do a lot of Christmas decorating. If I did, this is the sort of thing that I think I would put out. Wouldn't that be great on the mantle of an old brick fireplace and an old farmhouse? And not sure what I was looking at there, but underneath it, there's a mother and child that were made out of clay. I think someone handcrafted that and it was just pretty. It had lots of crayon marks on it, which makes me even a little bit more curious about its history. There was another piece elsewhere in the shop that I suspect might have come from the same artist if these were handmade. Some embroidery floss, but it wasn't terribly exciting. None of it was DMC from what I could tell. I am trying to remind myself that just because it's wound on bobbins and solid colors does not imply that it is DMC. So, so many rubber stamps. I find more rubber stamps than anything else in the craft section, except for maybe scrapbooking paper. There's also a lot of that. I don't know if people finally gave up on their hobbies. And I keep thinking back to all the rubber stamps I wanted, but couldn't afford back in the day. I bet I could find some of them if I dug hard enough. And I also bet that I still wouldn't make the time to use them because I didn't use the few stamps that I have. There's that Dimensions logo. It leaps out at me, but not cross-stitch. It's just candle wicking. I'm not even sure entirely what candle wicking is, but I do have a couple of kits I've picked up cheap, so one of these days I'm going to figure it out. And this milk can, I love old milk cans. I could not tell if this one was real. It looked just a little too clean to be true. And I think that the geese were probably decoupaged on there. I don't think they were painted directly on it. I just can't get nostalgic about geese with bows around their necks. There is the other piece that reminded me of that mother with child. It was a sparkly purple and I don't know what it was made out of. It was heavy. 
my daughter actually wound up buying that one and the plan is to finish it with something to protect it with the elements and put it out in her garden. She was very happy with it. And there's some plastic succulents. I know that I have this pattern in my stash. I can't remember what cross stitch designer that was. I can't figure out why I have it in my stash. It must have been something I picked up at a thrift store or estate sale. And here's another cross stitched piece. Makes you wonder when you find a few of them side by side like that if they came from the same place. And I love old vintage landscapes. This one reminds me of one I found up in Salem a couple years ago. It had that same yellowy tone to it. And I don't know if those two are the same or just very similar. The more I look at them, the more I think they're the same. Growing up, my mom and my grandma had these. I think every adult woman in my life had one of these makeup mirrors with the switch that you could set it to different lighting for different times of day. That is still a mystery to me. And my daughter, the beauty blogger, has no answers for me. Here's some vintage Tupperware. This store had a lot of Tupperware. And usually when I see it, it's at estate sales. And it is just so, so grungy. I can't believe that they didn't throw it away. We had Tupperware in the house when I was growing up. And by the late 80s, it was not worth keeping around anymore. This stuff was actually not in bad shape at all. But the stuff I've been finding at those estate sales, I can't believe that they think they're going to get money for it. I do not collect Tupperware. There are a couple of pieces I would like to find. That lemon-colored little colander mom had one. I have one. I finally found a white one for my daughter after looking forever for a yellow one. There's another piece that Tupperware lid is just so distinctive that it'll catch you from across the store. And you know, I know from the internet that Tupperware is supposed to burp but that's never something I saw in action when we actually had them. We're using the Tupperware. I've seen these milk glass goblets in probably three or four stores over the past month. And if I was going to bring home a piece of milk glass this trip, this would have been it. I love this picture. It's milk glass. It's hobnail. It just seems like I can tell you where that would have been in my grandma's house on Overlook if she had had that picture, which she didn't, but it looks like something she should have had. And here's another pretty candy dish. I saw lots of this drip design all over the place. Here is another one. I should, one of these days I'm going to count the milk glass because some days it is everywhere. I like these little pot-bellied stove salt, pepper, and creamer. They're just cute. And they're not something I would ever use, and I will just be happy that I saw them. And kind of wondering why you would have three. And want to guess the price of this copy of Scrambled Egg Super by Dr. Seuss? It is one of the books that has been pulled from future publication, and that was $250. We have seen more overpriced Dr. Seuss books in the past month than you would believe. And some of them are in just absolutely horrific condition. How are these? On, they don't have spines. The pages are loose. And the thrift store is asking... $3.99 each for the cat in the hat in such horrible condition, I would never have thought to donate it. The owner of one of our local used bookstores is warning against buying these because he said there are literally millions of copies out there. And once the current events are forgotten, you'll be able to find them later if you want them. 
they had this was the treasure trove of Nancy Drew. I have very rarely seen this many in the thrift store at the same time and they had tweed covers and they had covers with dust jackets and I am pretty sure I have copies of most of these but I need to update my list because there might have been something here I needed. If there was I left it for the next collector. I just there is something about those yellow covers and the blue tweed covers that brings back memories of childhood and just makes my heart sing. Do you have a series of books that you will stop for because they pull you across the room? Lots of those little 1970s figurines with the slogans on them and lots of little cottages. I think I already said I've given myself permission to start collecting these if I find a couple of houses that I really, really love. Because these are the kind that I like little houses, especially intricate little houses with lots and lots of details. Now, I need to find a corner in my house where I can display these without aggravating the people I live with too much because I'm not sure they'll understand the attraction. I'm just going to keep admiring these in the thrift store until I find the one that I cannot leave behind. Just look though at the stonework and the bucket and all the little details. I kind of almost fell in love with this cookie jar. It is the most fantastic old house. And I love, this is a glaze that it got darker in the creases of the project. So someone made this for Christmas in 1979 and it lives at my daughter's house now because I was able to resist, but she wasn't. I feel like I am missing something when it comes to the design of these San Francisco salt and pepper shakers. They're just weird. And here's the needle point. I've already shown you guys this in my 100th floss tube video. If you watch that, I love vintage needle point landscapes. They make my heart go pity pat and I don't see them terribly often. And when I do, they're usually not terribly inexpensive, but this one was only $6 and the colors are just amazing. So it lives with me now and someday I am going to have a gallery wall full of stitches that I have saved and this is going to be at the center of it. It's got a building, it's got a bridge, it's got mountains, it's got trees and this little round piece was cute but not cute enough that I felt the need to take it home. It did have a pretty frame though. The cross stitch golf bag just did not call to me at all. Somebody else is going to have to save those stitches. And since I found that much cross stitch, I looked through to see if there was anything else in the framed pieces. I did find these daisies, which are really pretty. I like the color of those and a string art T-Rex. I think that's the first time I've ever seen a string art dinosaur. They had a couple of little tiny cross stitch kits. Here's a teddy bear on a rocking horse by Busilla. And then, okay, it's a goose with a bow, but it's way cuter than the goose with the bow that was on the milk can. And if you're going to buy a goose and a bow, I guess that would be the one you would want to buy. Thank you for joining me on part two of our thrifting adventure. I don't know why I was filming the floor here. Obviously I was headed someplace else. There is still one more part to go. I am Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. Thank you for thrifting with me. Let me know if you saw anything that you would have had to go home with you. I'll be back with part three in about a week.